Yo, what's guys? We're on fire here. Back with another video. And today we're going to be hopping into another Madden 23 offensive scheme. Today we're going to be running the single back wing flex close offense. And this is definitely one of the most balanced offenses in the game. It's a formation that I've ran in the past. I ran it a lot in Madden 20, where it was popular. It was very good in Madden 21 as well. And it's good again this year. Now, this is a two wide receiver, two tight end formation. Again, you want to run the ball a good amount. Now, it is good in the pass as well, which is nice because you can mix it up with the run and the pass. Um, definitely want to mix in the run. If you're just looking to pass out of this formation, it's going to be tough sudden because if you allow them to play the pass strictly when you're under center, it's going to be difficult to move the football. Now, we're in the 49ers playbook. It's in a couple of other as well. Uh, here's my audibles. I like smash, dive, drive wide corner, and four verts. And then the other plays I like are stretch and this PA cross country on the right-hand side. So I'm usually going to come out and stretch or that if it's a pass heavy attack. Um, but yeah, overall, that is going to do it. As far as personnel wise, you should get some, you know, big boy tight end targets that can make catches for you. And of course, you need that good running back. So we're going to start out with the stretch here. And with the stretch, basically, you're just going to play a numbers game. Pretty simple stuff. Now, we're facing a cover three defense. And in the cover three, the case of the cover three, it's pretty symmetrical because you see you have two people in the box here with the slot corner in the corner and then you have the outside corner and the safety so it's pretty symmetrical um it does look like a little, little bit less congested over here so that's what we're going to do if you want to spread it out more you can even motion this guy out and maybe allow yourself to get out to the outside more um but really you just read the hole now it's going to depend on whether you can cut it inside or outside um it's going to be this linebacker in this case whether you want to cut it in or out. So you just kind of read him in this case. We're Oh yeah, we're going to take that outside. So you want to make your decision pretty early on, but up until that decision, you can actually, you know, you don't have to hold the right trigger. Um, overall, pretty good. Some other things you can do is motion over. If you are motioning, I like using Goddard rather than the other tight end. That's me personally, but now you see, oh, we have a bigger gap. We were able to cut it in that time instead of going all the way, all the way outside. So you definitely mix it up from that stand. <laughs> standpoint sorry guys i'm sick so that's why i haven't been dropping videos like the last couple days trying to get over this but clearly um we're still not 100 percent so i do apologize for my voice and I, I know it sounds a little bit weird but yeah overall stretch pretty good so again the, with the motion you can motion dot it over a lot of times when you motion that inside tight end the players won't shadow but when i what i notice is when you motion that outside tight end i feel like some linebackers will follow just some stuff like that that you notice when you run this formation a lot. Um, now, as far as running it to the right side, you definitely could do it. But, I mean, you see right there, it's going to be the short side of the field. One thing I didn't mention is that with this formation, you always want your wide receivers to the wide side for passing purposes. So, um, when you're in this situation, it could be tough sledding um, because there's always usually going to be a guy free. There's just not as much space for these guys to get picked up and blocked. And that is going to ultimately be your downfall. Some things you can do is, of course, incorporate motion uh, not him but Devonte smith you can actually motion him all the way across here um, and this could definitely help in my opinion you see we're able to kind of follow our blockers now and we would have an avenue if i was a little bit more patient to pick up more yardage so um, overall definitely a good run um, if you want to confuse them something you can actually do that i've done in the past is motion over Devonte smith but have the run flip to this left side this can a lot of times confuse the user. They're expecting it to go there and then boom, maybe you cut it back. But it depends situationally as well. Ideally, if they're in like a two man under or cover two, there's one of these guys wouldn't be there. Either the safety or the slot corner. One of those guys isn't going to be on the field. So you run it to that side and that's when you can fake with motion. So maybe you still run it to the right and you fake Goddard. You can do a couple of different things, cut it back. Uh, hope that that guy's picked up, which he really should be. But that's a good way to mix things up in my personal opinion. Um, moving on, we got our dive. I'm just going to go back to back runs and then we'll go through all the passes. With dive, I definitely like actually using this guy probably more as a motion guy. You can create kind of a wham block there. Wait, oh, yeah, and again, it's not really time for the defense to react because he's motioning in a step and then you're snapping the ball. So, and you just kind of motion him, snap. And now he ultimately can't be a lead off blocker. I don't snap him too, too early like I did there. The first one was good, so. Wait a second, and then snap him there. Now he's sealing off that left-hand side. If there was any kind of a defensive end or a slot corner or a safety off the edge, that was going to be free. That's not the case. You can also flip your dive to this left side and run it like this if you prefer that. 
and that is a perfect situation of what I was really talking about. So um, really when you're running the ball at an elite level like this, there are little nooks and things that you do to get next level. I promise you the best runners in the world, guys like Noah, pro players, they're doing things differently. They're not just doing traditional runs, snapping the ball. They're doing weird motions, they're slide protecting. They're doing things like flipping their dive, which might seem insignificant, but clearly here you see, all we did was flip the run, and now we get some extra help because in the first time we ran it, the left tackle ended up picking up this T-end. Now, since we flipped it, we were actually able to get our tight end to go to some use, and now we have, boom, our wide receiver picking up on the next level. So obviously if he is able to pick up a good block, we have 15 almost untouched. So it's just some next level stuff that you can do. Again, you slide to the right, flip this guy, motion him over, you snap him a second later. Here you don't get it, but you just go straight up the middle and you see the blocks are developing really, really well up that middle. So um, another thing you can do is incorporate the motion with Devontae Smith, which is something that, again, I'm a fan of. He's thinking it's outside stretch. You just go straight dive. And again, you see we're picking up at least five before contact almost routinely, and that's not even including tackle battles and fall forward animations. Some other things you can do is motion maybe Devontae Smith out just to confuse him a little bit, and then again, to go straight up the middle. Now, we do have the best offensive line in football, I would say, so that also helps, but uh, you guys kind of get the point. So let's hop into Smash now with the Smash play. I am a big fan of it. Um, it's a <laughs> very good play. This has always been my main passing player to this offense, so I have a lot of setups. The first one is just going to be a good way to incorporate A.J. Brown against like a cover three, and that's going to be to motion this guy out. Now you need a little bit of time if he's going to get bumped like that, but you see eventually he will be open against cover three. If it is a cover two defense, you don't have to worry about that at all, and he should just come open, which is nice. Um, so that is setup number one. Again, you do want to let him get set. It is unfortunate that you have to do this, but again, we showed that you can run the ball like that as well. So not too big of a concern. There you see he doesn't get bumped, and we're able to get the ball out a little bit quicker. Now, it's important when you're running under center offenses and you're passing the ball, you want to have really good pocket because if you do get shedded, you don't want to lose seven yards. That eliminates the opportunity to run the football at all. If you're in a second and 17, nobody's worried about your run game. I'm sorry to break it to you. So um, that is important. So again, what you notice I'm doing is that we have a good center. I'm able to just step up in the pocket here. And now one of the annoying things is Jalen Hurts is going to automatically take that step back, if I'm not mistaken. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but you know, you can also throw this little flat route, which I am a big fan of against backed off man in cover three. Um, again, you can even move them out further if you'd like, like even out here, throw it. Now you see you have more space to pick up a first down even. So definitely get creative with that. Um, some other things I like to do is maybe go with like a motion slant and then we throw Sharpie on a little flat. Motion them out. I like the motion slant this year, so you see, that's what you kind of want to do with your QB. You don't want to let them take the auto, you know, three-step drop and he's five, six, seven yards back. What you want to do is let him not develop and just, he takes a couple steps and then you're up in the pocket, you know, two yards around the line of scrimmage. If you get shed here, I'm fine, I'm second and 12. I can still run stretch if I want, uh, but it opens up a lot of the passing game as well. You're able to hold zones in real life like you would be able to. They're worried about the run. His user might be worried about the run. And this is a good play for spacing purposes. So that's one way to run it. Another thing you can do is maybe we just straight up street Goddard. And this play might look like it's, it sucks. It might look, you're like, oh my God, this play's terrible. Maybe you throw a little swing pass out there. Again, a lot of times I will block six out of this because it's not the best, but um, overall again, zone, you're picking it apart. You have a slant, you have a flat, you have a deeper corner out of its man coverage. You really have everything you need in that setup. Although it might not look the best on paper, it gets the job done. That's what you want. Um, so overall, I don't have a whole lot else for this. But some good setups there. Let me know if you guys want to see a gameplay. Next play is drive wide corner. This play is interesting. What you can actually do with this dude is he runs the wheel route. So what you can do is do these little ags. If you get one-on-one -on -one coverage, you guys know about the aggressive catches. It's not something that I like to exploit from the Madden standpoint because I find it really almost cringy to run an offense this way. It's disrespectful to the game to run your offense this way. I like to put together good schemes, really earn my passes, but um, I'm not gonna be mad at you if you do throw this, if it's one-on-one -on -one coverage because you saw it would have been a catch if this other corner wasn't there, nine times out of 10. 
So um, definitely, I guess, take advantage of that if you're able to. I mean, I'm not gonna get mad at it if it's working. So um, that is the first way to run it. You see actually against cover three on the short side of the field, this does work without motion, which chef's kiss, you love to see, especially from a guy, <laughs> from me, because not having to forfeit that motion is huge and it allows me to maybe throw out a motion slant with Devontae Smith which again, you guys know I love the motion out slants because they just get so open. They take a half snap count longer to run the route and that just allows them to get open so many times against zone coverage. Even against man, it will work. Um, so we love those. We have AJ Brown in the middle. You could throw him on a streak. He's fine on this in route as well. Either would work in that situation. I might go streak myself, but um, either would work. As far as some other things you can go with with this play, you can go wheel route flat if you want with Devontae Smith. Um, you can actually end up blocking Devontae Smith if you'd really want to. Maybe we just throw AJ Brown on a little drag. And then again, you can motion him out. We can throw Devontae or we can hit Miles Sanders here. Again, I would throw Sanders maybe a little bit earlier, but I mean, you guys see a lot of these are open. This is why drive wide corner might actually be better this year than smash because you have more opportunity in my opinion. Goddard will beat man coverage. You can smart out him if he's a little bit too short or you can even throw this backup tight end on a little baby flat here. You have a lot of options. Maybe we block our running back, just have a little zig out here, snap the ball. You can easily hit him, pass it up the field, and we have a first down. And that was even a late throw. So just a lot of opportunity overall. Um, if you want to fake a run, what you can actually do is create this post route with Goddard. So we turn him into kind of a post. You can't motion snap him. You do want to let him get set. I would smart out him for sure. Then maybe we streak. We wheel, we flat, and we drag. Bada bing, bada boom. Setup would be nice. And Goddard, he's able to get a top. Um, those zones really pulled far to the outside in that case and down with the drag, and it's really open. So that's drive wide corner for you. Now you got four verticals. This play not as good, <coughs> in my opinion, this year. Um, you still do have this wheel route, which, of course, you guys know would be good for Ags. Even if you throw it early, it's going to be open. You can bullet past that. You can low ball it. You can high ball it. It's really open. So we love that. This is kind of a good quick snap play. Um, of course, you got your seam routes with AJ Brown and Goddard. Probably your a better bet would be to move one of those guys if at all possible. So maybe we throw Goddard on a little out route. I'm not sure what you would do. Maybe an out route would work. Maybe you throw Devontae Smith on a little motioned out slant route, which again, we love. So. Um, again, it's probably the worst pass play out of the bunch, but it is still decent. Um, it's a good quick snap play, in my opinion. It's really good for the aggressive catches. Again, I don't like to use those too much, but I know there are people who watch this video who run aggressive catches. State of the game. I mean, Devontae Smith, we're at one-on-one. -on -one. It's going to be a catch every time, and having four verticals is going to be a good play for that because it's going to man up every single player, double-team every player. Likelihood is not. So even if you have the opportunity... You probably like throw it up and catch the ball. We've seen those animations. It's man coverage zone, eh. But you guys get the point. Let's hop into that last play, the PA cross country, which I am, of course, a fan of. PA cross country. Um, this play is interesting. The crossing route, I'm not as big of a fan, but because you're running wide receivers on the wide side, you actually might have a little bit more space. I'm not against running the play action. He does seem to get over there quickly. Now, when you run it with the, the tight end streak with A, it's not as good. You really do want, um, uh, we'll try with this dude. I'm not sure that it'll work. Um, it does work a lot better. So if you are going to streak someone, I would go with that <laughs> second tight end. Um, Devontae Smith, I don't mind him being on a curl here because you can easily throw it up like this and it's going to be a catch every single time against really anybody. Of course, Devontae Smith isn't even a big receiver and he's able to come down with that. So I actually don't hate these little slot curls because you can throw them to catch make sure that you high ball of course otherwise it's a pick every time um, and they're gonna make the catches almost every time I love those spacing routes if you're not doing that well, what what well, what bad bad stutter there but what can you do motion out slant again you can even keep the play action he's gonna get in the window you can throw it same thing we've always been doing if you want to bail out what can you do maybe we throw Sanders on a little quick wheel just get Devontae on a streak, and we have the option to aggressive catch now. So um, just giving yourself options that Sanders would be open in the seam as well. We weren't able to get the ball off, but you can kind of see that. 
But anyways, that's going to be the video. If you guys enjoyed, drop a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel down below, and peace. I'm out of here.